guys, this is Sugar Cyanide from House of Cyanide. I am doing this as a video response to a very old video done by Pappy, Pappy Stan, Pappy Stan, I don't know how to say her name, um, or Pappy Gibson, something like that, Pappy Gibson. Um, she's this adorable British redhead, adorable. She did a video on, um, she has a lot of videos on Egyptian witchcraft and uh, she showed her books that she uses to study Egyptian witchcraft. Um, and I also do a lot of Egyptian witchcraft, although um, my path is very different than hers. Um, she is more traditional and does a lot more reconstruction than I do. Um, I pretty much do more of the old school traditional hereditary witchcraft and then just work with the Egyptian gods. Um, that's what works for me and you know do what works for you. So, um, But anyways she did this video showing the books that uh, she recommends and I wanted to uh, do a video of the same. So I grabbed my books out of my bookshelf that particularly part pertain to Egyptian, um, either mythos or witchcraft. So the very, very first book that I ever got on um, uh, Egyptian witchcraft was uh, The Circle of Isis. Okay. Um, and this book is probably more Wiccan in its slant or Neo-Wiccan and it's slant. Um, it's definitely not a reconstructionist book. Um, there's a lot of guided meditations and um, things of that nature. Um, definitely more for the beginner. Um, one of the things that I really, really liked in this book um, is the description of set in this book. Um, I am a setite. I do work with Set. I have been claimed by him. He is one of uh, the gods that I work with on a regular basis. I even named one of my cats after him in a joke. He thinks it's funny. Although the cat now is known as Monster uh, because I started feeling weird calling him Set all the time. Um, anyway, <laughs> um, so in this particular book, I really like the way they describe set. And the way that they describe it is using kind of um, the Kabbalah way of looking at things that there must be balance and that um, destruction and um, negative forces are necessary so that you can be reborn again stronger and that. Um, if there was no negative, you would never appreciate the positive, and I really, just really like um, the way that they describe Set in this book. Um, they don't describe him as evil, as Satan, they don't describe him as, you know, this horrible entity that you should stay away from. Um, he is definitely not for the beginners. Um, I do not recommend people to work with him unless they know what they're doing um, because he is severe it's probably the best way to put it so um, he will ask more from you than any other entity and he will kick your butt um, kind of like a drill sergeant yeah so you don't need to be scared of him, but you definitely need to be respectful. Um, and like I said, I would not recommend him if you're just starting out. But this book was the very first book that I ever got, and I really liked um, how they described Set in this book. And um, I generally liked this book overall. I'd give it a B minus. Um, there was you know, there's there's a lot of there wasn't a whole lot of meaty information into it. 
Um, but again, that's why I recommend it for beginners, because it's kind of an easy read. Um, the next two books were given to me, actually the next three books were given to me by friends of mine. Um, usually the, my favorite things that I own have been gifts to me. Um, and I love books. So, if you're, if you're looking to give me a present, books. Books and crystals, my two favorite things ever. And, and herbs. I'm really getting into the herbs too, but it's, it's taking me a little bit longer to get into the herbs. So, um, the next two were given to me at the same time. Um, I am a dedicant to Bast, and so uh, The Cult of the Cat, which I don't know if you can see, there we go, um, by Patricia Dale Green, um, and this isn't a pagan book, it's not a new age book, um, this is more of an anthropology history book, okay, um, that deals with basically cats throughout history and mythos and legends and things of that nature, and it goes through everything. So if you are a worker of Bast or a dedicant or if she has called you, I definitely recommend this book because um, it, it talks about cats and, and history, you know, starting with the Egyptians and, you know, goes into Asia and the whole night. So, um, this book is really, really good. It's really meaty, um, so it's probably a higher reader level. I know um, there were times I ended up taking notes. Um, I could only read probably a couple of sections and I had to take a break to process everything. Um, the next book, also given to me by the same person, um, is Egyptian Paganism for Beginners. This is the same book that, um, Happy Stan? Happy, Happy Gypsum? I'm horrible, I'm sorry. This is the same book that she recommended, and I do recommend this book as well. Um, I, I like the description of Set much better in Circle of Isis, um, which is by Ellen Cannon Reed. This one's by Ellen Cannon Reed. So um, I like Set better in this book. I think they did a better job describing him than they did in this book. Um, but the rest of this book is really good. Um, it has a lot of really great information, um, which is why I also recommend it. So um, the last book was also a gift to me. Um, it's Ancient Egyptian Myth and Legends by Lewis Spence. Um, this book is, again, not a New Age book. This is an anthropology history book. Um, Lewis Spence was a journalist in the 40s and 50s and, um, and, a, and an occult um, writer as well. So, um, but he was, it's not a new age book, it's, it's definitely more old school, and this is also a very heavy, meaty book, um, and it has a lot of information in it, and it talks about, um, basically all the, the myths and legends, and like, it, it's, I don't even know how to explain it, like, there are paragraphs, and then there's, subparagraphs and you know so like it taught it gives you the actual like information from like the um, book of the dead and then it has an explanation down here where it like almost translates it into simpler language to understand it so um, it's pretty heavy duty um, and if you work with um, Egyptian deities, I highly recommend it because this is the historical, anthropological myths and legends. Um, you know, it's an actual translation of like the Book of the Dead and things of that nature, um, and or the temple writings. You know, so y you're not. It's it's got original source material versus second or third. Um, source material, okay? 
Uh, so that's why I do recommend it because it does have the original source material. As you are getting into reading books about um, either occultism or paganism, you will learn that the one-on-one -on -one books are great when you're just starting out, but after a while, I recommend going to the one-on-one -on -one books and look at the sources that the authors, because the authors, are, it's required, otherwise it's considered plagiarism. Um, the authors have to list their sources. Look at their sources. Go read their source material. Yes, it's going to be heavy reading. Yes, it might make your brain hurt, might give you a headache. You know, yes, it's kind of like um, studying philosophy in college. Um, but if you're really interested in this and you really want to do this correctly, then look at their source material. And that's where you're going to get the really good information because you're not getting it second or third or fourth hearsay. You're reading the original source material where these, these original thoughts and, and philosophies come from. So um, that's my recommendation on Egyptian paganism um, other than just working with the gods yourself. Um, read, read, study, study, always, and take everything, like I, ju like I said in the other video, take everything with a grain of salt, listen to your heart, and think for yourself. Alrighty guys, talk to you later. Bye.